Welcome everyone to our 20th webinar. Where we'll be talking about metal prints. Um, this is just going to be a slight exploration of the options that we have available, um, just so you could see also behind the scenes of how we produce our metals here at Luma Prints. Um, hopefully this will be informative and get you to know more about our processes. I know people always enjoy, you know, learning more about that. Um, if you do like these webinars, do let us know. We do have a YouTube channel. You could see our other videos where we cover other products such as frame fine art paper and also canvas. So if you're interested to see what other products we talk about at length and with more detail, um, yeah, our YouTube channel has all that available. Um, Last week, we had our 19th webinar where we talked about shipping options that we had available and how you can best, you know, um, budget for those types of shipping op options, especially for the larger prints. Um, we talked more about how if you do have large prints, where is kind of the threshold where it gets a bit too expensive and how you can do the, uh, some smart, you know, sizing to kind of navigate that. Um, so if that's interesting to you, again, YouTube channel has all those videos, um, but let's go into metals. Um, our metals are one of the options that not a lot of people know about, but if they do, they're not 100% sure if that's the product that they want to print it on. So hopefully after this video, you'll kind of have an understanding of like maybe if it's the right fit for you or not um but it's one of those products that i personally really enjoy seeing produced in our production end just because it's a very unique um print and it's one of those items that i think most customers offer as a premium option when it comes to their uh imagery uh but we can get right into it and talk more about it so let me bring up the presentation for it All right, can you see my screen okay, Sarah? Thank you. All right, so just a quick introductory about metal prints. Um, they're again, a premium option that we offer, and I think it's very well suited for all kinds of imagery, um, specifically photography, uh, images with very vibrant colors. I'm talking neons, highlighter colors, and just very saturated artworks. It's a great medium for that, especially if you want those images to really pop and even illuminate, if you will, because of how the reflectivity works on the metal surface. Um, again, a great option and uh, something worth your consideration. But uh, let's go in first to how you get to a really nice print product because it all starts with the file requirements that we off, uh, that we ask for. Because, you know, if you were to bring a, unfortunately, like a low pixelated or a low quality image, it might not you know, do the image justice. So highly recommend that you follow these rubrics for what we uh, asked for, which is 300 DPI, Adobe RGB, um, these following image formats, and making sure that it's um, a good file size. So if you do have a photography image, I know those get really big. Um, worry not, you could always send it to our customer service team. They're really great at helping you guys get those prints produced for those really large images. And if you're ever wondering what, um, you know, how to go about making sure that your print does look good, uh, in a previous webinar, we did talk about how you can use the one inch uh, rule or the ruler rule, if you will, because if you were to open your editing software, it's kind of hard to gauge what the image is going to look like, especially when you zoom in at 100%, you know, it might look really big and you're not 100% sure if that's what it's going to actually look like. And what you're going to be looking for is for pixelation or fuzziness. But again, it's about knowing how big it's going to be once printed. So if you use a regular ruler and like one that you could have on hand and you line it up to the measuring or the ruler that's in the editing program, if you can line it up inch by inch, it will um, look uh, like, you know, what it would look like in real person. So as long as, you know, the ruler and the editing software's rulers align up together, then you'll definitely know um, how it'll look like in person once printed. So once it's at that size, um, you could definitely uh, see what it's going to look like. Um, and it's kind of like a preview, if you will. 
Right. And then when it comes to how it's made, I think this is what people are kind of looking forward to because they kind of want to know the behind the scenes of it. Um, but uh, once you have that print file sent to us, our uh, team processes the image and we have it ready for print. One of the machines that we use is the heat transfer machine that allows for us to infuse the images onto glossy silver or white or glossy white coated aluminum metal, and this is a process called dye sublimation. And so kind of using heat and pressure, the machine will infuse the image together. But let me show you a video so you can get a better understanding of it. Um, as the video is playing, uh, playing, I'll kind of discuss what happens here. Um, one of the first things we do, oh, let me pause real quick. One of the first things we do here, if you see, there's the transfer paper and then the metal. One of the more important things to keep in mind is that um, these two items have to be very clean and immaculate. Otherwise, any dust or debris that settles on them could show up in the printing process. And that's not good because then it's kind of there baked into the image. Um, so what we do is that we use um, an air blow gun and also microfiber cloth to wipe down the metal and make sure that any debris or any dust that's settled onto the metal is kind of blown away. And then with the transfer paper, we also use the air blow gun to just ensure that nothing has settled on it since it's printing. Um, but that's just one of the steps we take to make sure that your metals look pristine and look good when um, being printed. And so I continue with the video. Here you see that he's kind of taping down the metal to the paper. That way it doesn't move when it's being printed together because, again, it's squished together with heat. Um, it's going to create that print. As you see, he's putting it into the machine and we're covering it, making sure that the image doesn't get scrubbed up during the process. -y. Make sure it's really well cushioned. And for our prints, we have specific temperatures and specific heats or specific times as well. So it feels like baking a cake, if you will. Um, but instead of baking it on, you know, ingredients for a cake, we're baking a polymer coated metal with a transfer paper. And after the time is done, you know, it results in your image. And here I have an example of a glossy silver. So here you see it um, fresh out of the oven, if you will. It's still really hot, so I couldn't touch it at the time, but I kind of wanted to show you what it looked like once That's it was cooled. Funny. Um, again, it looks really nice, and um, I think that the silver uh, looks great for certain imagery, and then we could also see examples of the um, glossy white. Um, these are the two products that we offer for um, each uh, for the metals, and glossy silver and glossy white each have their own um, item or their own purpose. Um, I would say that... Uh, when it comes to glossy silver, it's a great base to use if you already have a silver type of imagery or something that will bode well with that backing, or you have a um, black and white image. So those types of imageries work really well with it. As you saw in my previous example, um, I kind of used a um, black and or a silvery image with a pop of red, but it still looked really nice and really strong. So if you like that, um, for sure, give it a try. I think it is more for specific images, whereas glossy white, which is our more popular option, is shows the image true to color. As you will see it on the, um, you know, as you will upload the image, that's how it will look like once printed. Um, I think the main distinguisher between the two is that you're going to have a different white base, if you will. So the white set base for glossy silver is going to be that silver aluminum that you see here and for the glossy white it's going to be a glossy white so your whites will look like whites keep in mind that when you have them in a dark room the glossy white will show true to color whereas the glossy silver might appear a little darker so just some things to keep in mind i think both are really cool and depending on your imagery both um, have their strengths And then for the options that we offer, we offer three types of options mainly. Um, the metal easel is a great option for smaller items or smaller prints, um, especially if you want to have them um, stand on a desk or on a furnish furnishing. 
Um, when it comes to hanging them, it will be more flush to the wall compared to the other ones. So do keep that in mind. If you want your metal to stand out a bit, then the other options are great as well. Um, for the inset frame, our frames that we have here, as you see, have a small lip so you can hang it every which way. So, you know, if you ever worry about, you know, seeing this and you're wondering, oh, well, how will it hang? Well, it hangs because we do offer a little lip within the inset frame itself. So it should be easy to put up onto the wall very easily. I would say this one has one of the easier installations. And then for your other options, you have the stainless steel mounting posts which we offer in two uh, diameters, which is the 0.75 and the one inch diameter, but both will be one inch. Um, if I could take a moment here, I could actually show you what that looks like um, in person, because I know some people want to see, you know, what the process looks like, but here's the uh, mounting post here. Here's the one inch one, and then here, or, and then here's the 0.75 one to show you what it looks like is what you'll do is you'll screw in the screws into the wall and then you'll add in the mounting post bottom to your screw like that and then you'll put this back on and you'll screw uh, this side on with the metal in between so it kind of creates a really strong installation process uh, installation and it's great for i would say hospitality retail and corporate as well as just home fixtures as well but it's a very stable mounting process that i recommend for a lot of people um and then each one does have its own cost so be aware of that when you're processing an image through luma prints and getting a metal all right let's go back to the presentation Okay, so these are the, again, the three types of um, hanging hardware that we have available. Um, each, all of them are pretty good in and of themselves, but again, it's for what purpose you want it to serve. And also the depth that you're looking for as the mounting posts have a one inch depth to them. Inset frame has a 0.75 depth to them. And for the most part, the metal easel is pretty flush to the, to the wall if you were on it, if you were to hang it. Okay, and then regarding the way that we ship our metals, um, shipping metals is um, kind of very similar to how we ship our canvas in that we do offer uh, spidering. And what spidering does for um, our packaging is that it allows the image or the print to stay in place, suspended inside the um, packaging. That way its corners don't really touch the actual corners of the packaging. So this is a really great option um, that we offer and it keeps also the uh, box at a very minimal weight and pretty compact so your shipping costs are also relatively low when shipping metals as well and again just bringing up the ideas that you can have with what metals are great for and kind of opening your mind to the possibilities i think from what i've seen on a personal um, note whenever i'm in production i think photography works really well with it um, pop art colors if you have silver colors that bode well with the um, silver aluminum that you have for the glossy silver that's also a great option um, and in general just for the overall aesthetic of metal prints they're great for corporate hospitality and retail areas so say you have a client that wants to have uh, imagery ready on um say uh their you know store walls or in hotels or in the office um, these tend to look the best when it comes to um, showcasing the imagery in those types of settings okay and let me stop the video all right, um, and that's basically it, what you have to know about metals. Um, in the meantime, I'm opening the floor up to questions uh, that want to be asked specifically of metal or anything else, really. I'm open to those questions. Um,
In the meantime, if anyone wants to write it down or get into a call, um, we did have a question submitted through our um, forms, which I always try to check in to read. Um, we got a question from Rebetta who said, will we be able to offer customers the ability to personalize the metal art? And in which case metal art, um, it really is up to how you offer your imagery on your website. If you allow your customers to upload their own images, or if you work with the customer to create customizations to their artwork, um, all we need is the image file at the end of that customization process. Um, we'll print whatever your customer wants. Um, there are definitely websites that offer you, your customers to upload whatever imagery they want onto your website, and then you can go ahead and have that printed um, through Luma Prints, and that's kind of applicable to all our products. All right, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm open to answering them. Otherwise, let me guys let me know if you guys like the video, if you guys want other um, images um, or other types of products to be showcased. Um, we do have a question from Boris who says, um, if we offer custom sizes for everything but metal, we do, but for metal, we have set sizes for them um, and we go up to 24 by 36 on metal and as small as 8 by 10. So there is a limited range in the metal sizes. Um, yeah. Oh, um, just as a note, so we will be offering custom sizes soon. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you exactly how soon, maybe next two to three months. Um, along with larger size metals too. Uh, so that's something to look forward to, but um, not now, but it will be coming soon. Fantastic. So you guys heard that. Um, that's something in development right now is to offer custom sizes in the future. So hopefully we can get that started because yeah, that has been a request here and there. People do want those custom sizes. So we're always looking to see how we can service our customers better in that regard. And as always, um, if there are no more questions, um, I could start concluding the webinar. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. We do have a question from Boris as well. Let's see, question about mounting hardware for any of the products. Um, Yeah, so Ken, do you want to talk more about how um, the locking hardware works for our products? Oh, sorry, what do you mean by locking hardware? I'm under the impression where, you know, making them so they can't be removed from the wall. Ah, okay. Um, I guess that's that's outside of metal. Well, I guess technically we can install on metal prints too, um, but we'd have to use... Uh, maybe a wooden frame in the back instead of the um, polystyrene frame. Uh, basically, the locking hardware is a three-point hardware. Um, we have put it up on our website for canvas prints and uh, framed canvas prints. Um, we don't have it up for metal yet, I believe, nor fine art, uh, framed fine art prints. Um, though that's something we can consider uh, though, but we, we'd have to test the application of it onto the existing molding, whether the molding can withstand the, the, the three-point locking hardware, basically. Um, are, you, are you asking if the... Let me check right now, actually. I think we just added it as of like a week ago. <laughs> so you may or may not, like I don't know if you're looking for that. Um I'm logging onto our website right now to take a look. Let's see. Uh, yes, I do see it there. It's called a three-point security uh, installed. 
Um, so, yes, it's available now. Uh, sorry, as a caveat, it's available for 0 0.75 and 1.5 inch canvas. Uh, the only hanging hardware option for the uh, 1.25 um, canvas is uh, Sawtooth. Since that product is meant to be like a uh, lower cost but and fast production type of product, um, that's why only Sawtooth is available for the 1.25. Um, but all the other hanging hardware options are available for the uh, 0 0.5 canvas, 0 0.75 canvas, and the 1.5 canvas. Um, estimate for largest size of the metal prints. Uh, maybe up to, don't hold me to this. We can definitely do 3040s. Um, maybe even up to a 40 by 60, but I would have to double check on that. What sizes are you looking for, Tovo? Maybe around 24 by 48. Okay, yeah, I think that would be within range of the size that we, we can do basically the 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 one limiting factor is the size of the heat press, um. So we can only go, uh, you know, basically up to the size of the heat press that we'd have. But I think the heat press is forty by sixty. Um. So I had to double check on that, but um, it'd be somewhere around there. Thanks, Tovo. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to hear that people are interested in the metals and the custom sizes as well as we're developing that right now. So thank you guys. Thank you, Boris. Thank you, Tovel. Um, I think that's about it. So if you guys have any other questions, feel free to answer them. We will be uh, still here for a bit longer if you guys have any more lingering questions. Um, if not, as always, you can uh, sign in and or subscribe to our YouTube. Um, check out the pricing of the metals in... Um, over in the uh, website at lumaprints.com. We do have pricing there for all our custom or all our sizes for metals. Um, and with that being said, thank you. I look forward to talking to you guys in the next one. Bye.